Good morning for me. Good evening for you. Hi. How's it going? Going well. I bet you're excited about upcoming. what's upcoming with your big event in Belgium. I'm excited and I'm nervous, but I think it's going to be a good, good uh, group because everybody's already talking online on Facebook and they're all getting along. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. That's awesome. How's our boy? Hi, Eric. I love you. He's saying same old, same old. Same old, same old. That's awesome. Well, we've got an exciting topic we're going to start with today. I'm going to ask you, Eric, some questions about uh, Kim Jong-un. Uh, the that little crazy Norwegian. I mean Norwegian. Oops, sorry, sorry, Rooney. Norwegian. Sorry, Rooney. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, so what is going on in this dude's mind? Seriously. He's saying, okay. Let's take a look at the little dude. <laughs> the little dude. Well, he's okay. So a lot of people think that he is, um, in some way or form, trying to be better than his father. He's trying to um, kind of follow in his footsteps because um, let's just say that he wasn't prepared when uh, he came into power. He wasn't yeah. ready for it. They didn't expect uh, his father to die that fast. Um, so he was kind of thrown in there. Um, but what he's trying to do is, okay, well, if you look at the history of Korea, um, when you look at his grandfather, um, you know, he was already the dictator, but his people was actually not doing so badly. Everybody had food, everybody was taken care of, and the people actually liked him, believe it or not, despite all the, you know, um, the brainwashing, we'll leave that part aside, but okay. somewhere deep in there, they did kind of have respect for him because he did take good care of him. Now, when his father came into ruling, he really messed things up. Uh, people started becoming very poor. There was no food enough. Um, there was a lot of famine among the people. So um, let's just say that his father did not do a good job at leading the country um, and really destroyed it in some way or form. So what he is trying to do is um, he is actually trying to restore the country to the way that his grandfather um, had it uh, made. Um, and he wants to be uh, adored like that. That's why you see a big difference between how his father, you know, his father would never publicly speak because he was a stutterer. Uh, oh. That's something that a lot of people don't know. It was kept a secret, oh. but he was not good. Literally, you know, he was not good speaking. Um, it was not always very clear what he was trying to say. So um, he would also not really go and mingle with the people. It was all from from a distance. The, mm -hmm. the ruling was done from a distance. Okay. His grandfather was, you know, he would walk around and kiss the people and carry their babies and things like that. And you can see that that's what he's doing now as well. He's, you know, pretending that everything is great and everybody is happy and, and things like that. So it's really about Let's just say that he came into this role as a young man and he wants to prove to the world that he can be a leader, but he feels that he's not being respected. Uh, so he went the other way. Okay. If I can't be respected, then I want to be feared. Okay. I want to be noticed. I want to, um, I want people to, um, in some way or for, form, bow for me and show me the respect that I deserve. Well, is so, he insane? Um, is he insane? I mean, is, is it narcissist? I mean, does he have some sort of mental disorder? He's not insane. He just, um, narcissistic, yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> going, let's just go yes on that one. Yeah, really. He's not bipolar or he doesn't have, um, OCD, is that it? Uh, he, he's saying that it's really about, um, he, he's saying just look at what he's doing. He is eliminating um, <clears throat> leaders, you know, that were, that had supported his father for so long. 
Um, you know, he's basically killing people off that that don't go with his new method, that don't go with his new approach of how to run this country. So what he's doing is he's eliminating everybody who's against him. And the problem is, by doing that, he's actually, he's actually creating the opposite of what he wants to achieve. He does want to be seen as a leader. He does want to be seen as a kind of, in a way, he wants to be seen as like a president that was elected by uh, his people, which is completely uh, oh. madness. But... Um, that's kind of the approach that he wants. He wants people to adore him for, you know, for who he is and what he's doing. But instead, what he's creating is more fear because these people are like, OK, well, you're pretending to be all nice and you're showing pictures of you holding babies and, you know, going to the amusement park and having fun. And then on the other side, you're killing your own your own uncle. You're killing all these people that were, you know, that served your father for so long. So he's kind of um, creating more. Um, fear into the people that are there and, and making it worse. So um, let's just say that he's not doing a good job at achieving what he wants to achieve. And the more he feels like he's failing, the more he becomes aggressive, the more his anger uh, rises up front. And he really, um, you know, he could go into extremes and he could really go and, and you know, release a nuke if that's really what he wants to do. Well, let me ask you that. That's a very important question. What is the chance of him attacking us or one of our allies and if so with what i mean there's emps there's chemical there's bio you know biologic weapons nukes right now the way the energy is flowing the chances that he does attack the united states is pretty large unfortunately however there are things uh Let's just say there are forces that are trying to um, prevent this. Um, what would he use? Definitely nuke. That would definitely be it. Um, that is his preference. However, let's just say that there are things turning. Um, um, he's talking about China. Um, it's almost like he, the Chinese, are they, do they work together? Or are they like an alliance? It's a very or complicated relationship. Very complicated. Okay. They do not, not want him. Like, they don't want him to attack us. Because he's showing me how they're kind of getting along, kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. They kind of an alliance or some some shape or form. However, um, there's going to come a time where even the Chinese are going to be like, oh, oh, you know, this guy can turn against us as well. Um, and what's going to, what's supposed to happen is the Chinese are supposed to invade, well, they're already in there, actually. Um, he says, you know, but they're, they're supposed to take him out. Oh, um, really? How? However, however, he says, this is free will. I <laughs> Just, know. Yeah, you so never know. He, constantly changing so but know that that is what the the universe what the energies are they're trying to kind of manipulate that from happening how they, will, they they kill him? Will, they, will they shoot him will they poison him what will they do what what is their intent right now right now they're kind of thinking of doing uh i guess like a like an attack with a bombing they're okay. like shooting at his home or, or just wherever he's at, I guess, just bomb the place. Okay. Um, it's what they're showing me. Um, okay. Yeah, right. it just feels like there's a lot of things uh, going on that people don't know about, that they're not going to disclose, of course. Um, however, you know, the United States, they really need to, let's just say that they, they can't jump to the gun. They can't. No, like a yeah. decision, uh, Just based on, you know, let's get this fucker and just go over it. No, it's good. This is going to have to be an operation. It's going to have to be planned. It's going to be something that is going to be a coalition of different, um, okay. different countries. Right now, China is still kind of all over the place with this. I know, I know. Okay. Just so you know, we're not there yet. However, um, the way it's going now, that should be the outcome. But know that it can change at any moment, any time. If, if Trump wakes up, he says, and he decides to push that button, 
um, you know, there you go. You just changed history. You just cha changed the future. So um, just know that this is a very delicate time it when it comes to. Um, it's not just about Korea and, and America trying to decide which dick is larger. Yeah. <laughs> Eric. Oh, God, he's uh, going how they're standing next to each other oh, going. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Taking measurements. Mom, they got. Um, you say, you know, it's not just about that. Um, it's, it's a lot more than that. Um, what we're learning as a kind of a global, global power is how are all these countries, um, you know, reacting to this? Um, how are they working together to try and figure out a solution? Um, and there are talks. Oh, yeah. But sure. it is kept secret. A lot of it is being hush hush okay. because they don't want to reveal what they're doing, of course. They don't want to reveal um, all the information Wait, to, to the people who might abuse it. Uh, I forgot to ask if, if he plans to nuke. What will he nuke? The mainland, Guam, uh, Japan, South Korea, all the above? I mean, what's my it looks now? like he would mainly go um, the states and Europe. Europe, oh my God! All right, isn't he? I mean, what does he think will happen if he nukes us? I mean, isn't he afraid to die? I, that's like suicide. He, his he mind is decimated. He's saying his mind isn't even contemplating that. He he sees himself as being, you know, superpower as being. Um, he's got, you know, he's got, um, let's just say he's got places where he can go, where he won't be affected, where everything is provided for him. Um, what about however, his people? His people would be slaughtered. His people would be slaughtered. Well, he doesn't care about his people. <laughs> he cares about himself right now. Um, let me tell you something that I think a lot of people don't know and a lot of people don't understand. Um, so let, let's get the cat out of the bag, he says. Okay. What people don't know is over these past years, right? Because this has been going on for a while. Um, every time he made a threat, do you really know? Do you really think they said, don't you do that? And then he stopped? No. What really happens is, and this is all hush hush, this is what they don't want people to know. They actually give him money to stop making threats. Why do you think he has the money to build all those bombs? To build, if you look at what he's doing right now, he is building so much new stuff in his country. He is building all these weapons. That costs money, people. Well, who's okay. Giving him the money. Countries. Unions, the United States, the European Union, they pay him off to shut up. They pay oh. him off to say, stop with these threats. Here's some money, shut up. Oh, my God, that's not, that ain't you. working. Uh, yeah, so he's saying, no, a lot, people don't understand this, but this has been going on for years. Only now he's kind of like, well, I've got all my, my weapons now. You know, it's all built. It's all been funded for. Thank you very much. So now he wants the power. Now he wants the respect. Now he wants people to fear him. Um, that's what he wants now. What do the actual North Korean people think about America? A lot of North Koreans don't even know what America is. Yeah. What, what is, why does Kim Jong-un uh, hate us so much? Um, it has to do with uh, America presenting itself as the most powerful country in the world. Okay, so it's just a power. It's just a power play. It's just a power struggle. That's it. He doesn't hate our capitalist way or no, his, uh, no. freedom. No, he actually, believe it or not, but he actually um, he spent his childhood in um, Europe, is what they're showing me. So really? he knows how our ways are, how our religions work. He knows everything in and out. And um, what he's doing now, and a lot of people might not be aware of that either, is he's actually sending a lot of his leaders, we'll just call them that, a lot of the, some of the people that he trusts, uh, they are spread out all over the world right now, learning about 
you know, um, about how how the economy is, how we are as a people, et cetera, et cetera. So he's actually he's got what we would call spies a little okay. bit of everywhere um, who will then come back and, and, and help him um, in, in basically taking over some of the um, success stories on building economy and so on and so on bringing it back to him and then he could be, you know, portray himself as the savior and, and feed people and make him feel good. And he's going to be uh, Jesus, you know, because there is no religion in Korea. It's not allowed. Oh, religion is forbidden. There is oh, no. Wow. I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, there's no religion, he says. So um, poor North Korean people. That's terrible. He wants to be he wants to be it. You know, he wants to be God. To be their God. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you were in charge, Eric, what would you do about this situation? Well, I think the only thing we can do without um, causing, you know, too many unnecessary deaths is to really um, in, infiltrate in the country and, and just eliminate him. Yeah. Capture him. That's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, another thing. What we all need to do right now, and I know that sounds like this, you know, this is so, um, so in some way, people are going to say, well, that's just stupid. Uh, but trust me, he says, um, it, this fucking works, okay? But we need to use the law of attraction. What we need to do is we need to visualize that he is being captured and that his people is being liberated and reunited with yeah. South Korea, that, that they can grow again together. Um, if we can visualize that and really put our focus on that instead of the fear of what is he going to do? Because guess what, people? You're not going to be able to stop his nuke if it does happen. So why fear it? Instead, induce it with having a positive outcome. Okay. Visualize that he was captured and he will be, you know, trialed or whatever, or he he might be eliminated in some way or form, but that his people is fine because these people have been going through centuries and centuries and centuries of brainwashing oh. and manipulation. And, you know, they just even mentioning America gets you and your whole family shot. So they don't even want to think about America or how it would be to be free. They are so intimidated by this regime that they, they're they not allowed to think freely anymore. And a lot of people don't, think that they're born into this. They think that yeah. that is how the world works. They don't know any other way. So it's going to be really important that we do visualize his capture and that we really um, visualize these people being aid back to a normal perspective. Of, well, well, well of do you think that if he is taken out, that the peninsula will be re, uh, uh, reunited, mm -hmm. that it'll all be one Korea? Yeah. Or will it be absorbed? North Korea be absorbed by China. No, it, it, it should be the way it's designed. It should be reunited with uh, South Korea. Yeah, so that they can really know freedom. Gonna, you know, China, a lot of people go, oh, well, but we're close to China as an American uh, country, a lot of people see as, you know, China, oh, you know, we get along with them. But uh, let's just say that their intentions are not always honorable. Uh, that they do want to be become a uh, global power as well, and they do want to be in control of a lot of things in the world. So they will probably kind of mm -mm, um, try and take over, but um, normally... South Korea should be able to um, kind of join together. Oh, um, no. Families will be reunited, believe it or not. There are so many families okay. separated still to this day. Yeah. All right, so say the worst happens and he does nuke us or one of our allies. Um, what's, what will happen? How many will die? And, and could it start World War III? It's really hard to say because if you're looking at, you know, if you're looking at um, the impact itself, it's going to be millions. But if you're looking at the long run, you know, you're, we're talking about skin cancer. We're talking about the cancers oh, yeah. that will come yeah. from the yeah. radiation. I mean, you know, it, it would be enormous, of course. Um, but he's saying, you know, let's not 
let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the positive outcome. Um, well, let's no, just I mean, say that's if he would, well, how, how, how let's would just say if he would, he says, let's just say that if he would launch, his country would be destroyed in a second. Do you think we could take out the, the missile before it hits us? Would that be successful? There is a possibility. There is a chance. But they would really have to know. They would have to have enough time. I know. That's right. If if the, if we did just decimate North Korea, would that start some sort of World War Three involving China, Iran, what's left of North Korea? I don't know. Russia, maybe. You would have China and Russia working together against the rest of the world. So either way, you don't extinguish a fire with more fire. Mm -mm. It, it's just what it is. People think that attacking a country, nuking a country is the solution. It really isn't. It just leads to more anger. It leads to more um, lust for power. And, and um, that's just how it is. So we really need to find a midway. And if we could all, you know, just know that this is going to work out and that, you know, the people who you know, who deserve to be punished will be taken in and will, you know, um, will get their trial or whatever. And, and those people will will be saved and, and will be reintroduced to the world because they are completely isolated. Um, you know, they don't have television like we do and they don't have radio and they don't have the music that we do. Um, you know, uh, let's focus on that. So, we can so, you, so you think the best thing, if we get nuked, even though, hundreds of thousands, I don't know how many people would die here, um, that still the best thing would do would, would be to just take him out and, you know, reunify he needs, the peninsula. He needs to be, yeah, he says the only solution to this is he needs to be removed from his position. Yeah. That's the only solution, unfortunately. But um, you have the, let's just call it the male energy is always like let's let's bomb them and just kill everyone, um, and then the female energy will be like no let's really go for the one who is to blame for this and let's help these other people who have been forcefully um, you know been retained against their will. So um, yeah, because that's just worse for the poor North Koreans who are already suffering so much. Well, I think that's going to happen. I really do. Hey, can we bring in Otto? Uh, well, first, do you want to say anything else about uh, North Korea's leader? Before we, I want to talk to Otto Warmbier a little bit. Um, <laughs> he's saying, well, you know, just um, he's saying, I just, I, I know people are going to be like, fuck that shit, but um. If we could all send love and light to him and give him the insight that, you know, that, that destroying the planet isn't, isn't the way to go, um, that he could be seen as a, as a, as a, a leader without the threats, yeah. uh, that there are different ways to approach this. If we can send him that energy, if we can give him that insight that, that, um, in order to be a good leader, you also need to be a humanitarian. I don't even know that's yeah. the word. Um, that if we can give him that energy and send that to him, then maybe, just maybe, um, he might get some insight and he might get um, okay. some clarity that this isn't the way to go. Um, but Let's all work on that every day. Send him yeah. any love. I know a lot of people are just like, kick his shit, just kick his ass and kill him. Oh, God, uh, but unfortunately, we don't see it from that perspective. We we see everyone with love and light. We yeah. we we you know we know that there's a there's a reason for everything. This is stirring up a lot of energy what, in how we're contract? dealing with these threats. Yeah, is it yeah, a spiritual it's, contract? It's, this guy's you know. Oh yeah, violent? this is definitely a spiritual contract, and and it's all about. Um, teaching the world on how do we deal with these threats and and how we can how can we resolve it with the least amount of casualties and how can we do this in a diplomatic way instead of just killing everyone um, you know there's a lot of lessons that are going to be learned from this um, and um, let's just say it also will bring some clarity in a, in a lot of things hi Easton Easton's at the door Oh, he's so cute. Hi, Easton. 
Eric is saying he plays with him all the time. Oh, I and bet. he talks to him. He's saying oh. he talks to him, but he talks to him in um, what well, we talk in energy. He says, you know, energy is the international language. We'll just yeah, call it sure. that or the universal language. And um, he really picks up on um, on the sounds of the energy. It's really weird that you say that because one of the questions I'm going to ask uh, next time I'm on the e-board with Robert is, this guy, it, it sounds like he's saying like sets of different words, different times over and over again, like it's a real language instead of baby babbling. Oh, he's talking for sure. Um, it's just what we would call the universal language. So he's speaking um, the language of energy. Like yeah. My, my language. Well, the thing is, um, when we speak it, there is not really a sound that comes up because uh, we're doing it mentally. Uh, However, he is uh, practicing how to use his vocal cords. So what he's doing is he's actually um, expressing this, the vibrations of the energy uh, uh, through uh, using sound. So he's matching up the two vibrations. And so that's probably why you hear a lot of similar words coming back. That's so it? cool. All right, I'll go Wambier. Let's have him enter stage left. Okay. Warm beer? I don't know how to. Warm beer does not sound Warm beer. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. He's here. His energy um, hmm. still feels kind of low, so I think he's still processing a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Otto. How are you doing? He's saying, hello, ma'am. I'm doing, I'm doing okay. Okay. Um, what happened? Tell us your story. He's saying, I made a stupid decision. <laughs> Yeah. You took a poster or something like that? Mm -mm. Oh. My stupid decision was going to North Korea. Oh. Yeah, why did you want to go there? You know, they made it sound like this was, you know, a light, one in a lifetime things. And yeah, um, it worked for you. For sure. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. I guess I had had an okay time when I was there. Um, it just didn't turn out the way that I expected it to be. Um, the reason I went is because I thought, how many chances am I going to be able to have to really see a country that is suppressed? by a dictator and be able to visit it. And, you know, it just seemed very interesting to see what was really going on in there, um, how it was for those people. I just thought it was, you know, an interesting excursion. They guaranteed us that everything was going to be fine. There were other people there. So I thought, okay, I'm in a group, um, you know, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. Um, but let's just say, yeah, that was the worst decision I have ever made. So what did they do to you? After they captured you, I mean, you had your trial and, and all that, and you're, you were sentenced. But what happened when you were under their captivity? In captivity, he's saying two men came and, and got him from the airport, um, and they immediately took him to a facility where he was interrogated, um, not on what they accused me of. Um, they wanted to know if I had more information on the plans of the United States, things like that. So they wanted intel oh. on the United States. Um, they didn't beat me, but what they do is no they didn't beat me but they would um it's almost like a psychological warfare they would scream at him they would force him down on his knees um 
He says one at one point, and this was even before I got to say my thing. He says, um, before you had to make your announcement, apology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had to memorize it, and I, I, um, I told him no. I told him I refused to um, say things that weren't true, and I would resist them, and so they would um, tie my hands and my feet Ooh, sorry oh. his energy is really poor he's showing me how they would hang him upside down um by his ankles okay. and they would just leave him hang there for hours mm -hmm. um until he would pass out um, and they, um, then they would bring him down and they would, um, I guess, force him to, to look at the text because he, he just keeps showing me how he would look away. Like he didn't want to, he didn't want to have anything to do with that. And, um, and they would force him and force him and force him until he learned it, until he learned it. And he's showing me how he would, they would tie his hands on his back and they would, um, um, it looks like he was tied to a bar that was in the wall and he was kind of on his, like through his, I don't know how you say it, through his knees and he was standing on the tip of his toes. So his hand, so, her hands were, his hands were tied together and they were uh, tied to the bar, but through his knees? No. So the, he was, he was, let's just say he was sitting, um, with bent at knees, you know how you sit oh, down, right, right, your yeah, knees yeah. are bended, and his tippy toes are just kind of oh, on the right, right. and That's his awesome. hands are tied, and there's a bar behind his hands, and he's just tied there, and he has to sit in that position oh, for hours while his his legs would start shaking. He says um, it, it was extremely painful, and eventually I stopped feeling anything. It's like his his body would become completely paralyzed. Did they feed you adequately? No, not a lot. And, and the food that they did give me wasn't very, let's just say that sometimes there were some maggots in there. Oh, gross. Oh. Well, how did you die? What was the cause of your death? I think it was a little bit of everything. It, it was the torture, uh, which was never, like, they would never leave marks. Um, he said they would um, electrocute him. Um, they would um, they would do the hanging thing a lot, he said, when I was hanging upside down. Um, and he said eventually they, they would start injecting me with... Um, kind of like a true serum or some, okay. some sort. Um, and they would do it on the regular, like sometimes three, four times a day. Um, and it, 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 he really had a hard time breathing, he says. I had a hard time breathing. It, it, um, did, did the, it's probably chloral height. I don't know. It could have been all sorts of things. But did the true serum, uh, did it suppress your respirations and make you have a respiratory arrest? I mean, what, what was the final thing? The last one was an injection, um, and basically I stopped breathing. Um, the two guards didn't know what to do, so I was, um, let's just say that my heart had stopped, um, and it took them a while to kind of think, what do we do next? So they had to kind of ask for permission, and by the time somebody came in to resuscitate me, um, let's just say that I wasn't there anymore. So did they try to resuscitate you? They, they did resuscitate me. However, um, oh, yeah, you were in a coma. Yeah. my brain had suffered too long uh, yeah. of, without being without oxygen. It was deprived of oxygen. So um, my body was still alive, but let's just say that I was no here. longer in my body. Why did they send you back to the U.S. in, in a coma? What was the purpose of that? Well, first of all, the reason they took me was to send a clear signal 
to the U.S. that, you know, don't mess with us. Okay. You know? Um, there was just a, a signal that the, the, the government had known this for a very long time before this was even um, mentioned to the public. The U.S. government? Oh, yes. Okay. Got it. They were, um, they knew about it, but they weren't, they didn't want to upset Korea. <laughs> they didn't want to add fire to the fire. So um, everything was, it was my, my capture was being um, hidden. It was was um, it from the North Korean people too? Oh yeah, they don't know about any of those things. Oh yeah, things. okay, I got but you. Especially the Americans, and it was eventually my dad who said enough is enough, and he's the one who went and publicly, you know, brought this to the to the light. So um, for that, I am very grateful because otherwise um, they might have never gotten my body home. Yeah. Uh, but um, the reason that they I think what most people don't realize is that my comatose state happened really quickly after the trial. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So How, long I was after? After. How long after the trial? Like a month later. Oh, my gosh. So they were trying to hide it. They didn't expect this that this was going to happen to me. They didn't expect that I was going to go completely in a coma and never wake up. That's why they waited so long. They've waited for over a year before they released me mm -hmm. because they were hoping I would still wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't. My brain was too damaged. Um, and so, so yeah, they, they tried to hide it for a while, but then eventually um, the Trump administration um, decided enough is enough. Um, and, and basically they handed me over um, coming up with some bogus excuse. Now, um, I hope, and I don't know if people notice, but during um, my confession, I really tried to sh give people some signals with my body language. Oh. So when I say that I did this, I shake my head oh, no. Oh, really? Okay. So I was hoping that people who have these skills that could see body language, that they would notice that this was forced upon me, that this was a fake confession. Oh. Um, I didn't want, I didn't want my family to suffer for my mistakes. I didn't want my girlfriend to suffer and to think that I would have done something like that mm. and, and risk my own life and risk, you well, know, so you, didn't, you didn't take a, a propaganda a post or anything. So you didn't do anything no. wrong? Oh, my God. Well, do you have uh, – well, first of all, I want to ask, was this a spiritual contract of yours? I mean, were you here no. to teach something? This was not part of my contract. I was not supposed to leave that early. Um, before I made the decision to go, my whole body said, no, don't do this. But I thought, well, you know, it's just fear. I'm just scared. It's going to be fine. But I had some clear signals not to go into this. And, and I did it anyway. I ignored my intuition. I ignored my gut feeling. I not, ignored. Not to go into North Korea? Fear. Not to go into yeah. North Korea? Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Do you have a yeah. message so, for your parents? So this was, oh, go ahead. Fortunately, this was unfortunately um me making a bad choice, me not listening to what everybody was telling me, what my my surroundings were telling me, what my family was telling me, what the universe was telling me. I totally decided, no, no, you know, this is free will. I'm going to do this and it's going to be fine. And I decided to, to kind of move all these anxieties that I would feel aside because I didn't want to be... Um, I didn't want to live my life with fear. So I thought, this you? is, yeah, is going to be the first thing I'm ever going to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> why, why did they pick you? It was random? It was random. Um, It's, he says there's, there was something about the way that I looked that I guess it, it seemed like I um, loved God and I loved the Bible and I was uh, religious. And I guess it's just the way that I looked. 
Um, you know, very I, was, very I was a good person. I was a good person, yeah. and I looked like, you know, a, a God-abiding person. And and um, yeah, it, it was very random. Um, and um, for some reason, they like to go for the Americans. Okay, um, well, let me uh, close by asking you to, if you want to give any messages to anyone, your parents, your girlfriend. I would like to let my family know that I love them very much and I am so sorry for the hurt that I've caused them. Uh, I just want them to know that um, they will have learned a lot of things from this. It wasn't supposed to happen, but they will have learned a lot from this and we will be reunited at one point. And I want to tell my girlfriend, Alex, that I will always love her and I will always watch out for, for her um, and that it's okay to move on. Um, but just know that she has a little guardian angel watching over her for the rest of her life. That's sweet. Eric, do you have any questions to ask Otto? He says, no, not really. The only thing that I can say is that free will, people, free will. Sometimes we make good decisions. Sometimes we make bad decisions. Either way, they were all uh, decisions based on learning and growth. Um, and so he learned from this as well. So um, nothing is in vain, people. Nothing is in vain. Otto, will you come back into the family, reincarnate, you know, reincarnate into the family? This. Uh... I will. Okay. All right. He's showing me his sister. Okay. His sister's his sister. baby. Okay. All right. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And we got. To, we'll get your story out there. And Eric, said, take care of him. Eric, buddy up with him. He says, I will. <laughs> okay, sweetie. All right, and we are going to come right back and do a quick uh, session on a very short subject. So, okay. guys, check out her website, Emma, uh, www.emmanuelmacintosh.com. I'll put it up here. And check out Channeling Eric, spelled with a K, uh, dot uh -huh. com for the blog. And, of course, watch all these YouTube videos. Emma, you have anything to close with? Um, just check out my new Rolling with Eric videos. Oh, it's a awesome. new thing we're trying, and I hope you guys enjoy them. You can watch them on YouTube. Awesome. And we are trying to uh, post one every Monday as a regular thing. Our little star, yeah. Emma. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye, All right. Emma. Bye, Eric. I love you guys. Bye, guys. We love you. Bye. Preparate.